Hello again, Gundam Converge Collectors. So bear with me, I'm learning about the Gundam Universe by collecting these toys. I bought these things loose, of course, because I don't have the packaging, but I brought up the box of this guy. This is uh, number 26 in the series. It is called Guyan in chassis YMS-15, I think. Yeah. And uh, Gundam Fandom is telling me this thing is around 20 meters tall, 70 tons in the, the uh, cartoon world of Gundam. And its story is basically it was used to f lure or fight the original Gundam, the RX-78. Alright, so that's what this thing is telling me. But to me, I just like it because it looks like an old medieval knight. I actually built um, high-grade model kits of both of these figures. So, But I sold them off. They're too big to keep around. And now a couple of years later, I got back into you know this type of Gundam instead of the model kits. So let's take a look here. Uh, so, like all the other Converse things, they're made of vinyl, rigid and soft uh, plastics. Uh, so, it obviously looks like a knight. Let's get a better light angle here. And the arms, yeah, they do come off. Now this one's stuck, it seems. Maybe some stuck paint. I noticed this thing is a separate piece, this little antenna horn on the top of the helmet. But if you look at the helmet, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It's a really interesting design. I believe this little mono eye is meant to actually rotate around inside the helmet and up and down so it can sense what's going on in, around itself. And then in typical Converge fashion, you have a lot of uh, molded details, you know, lines and uh, panel gaps and stuff like that. This one has these two, looks like jet thrusters on this backpack here. It's painted black. Actually, no, it's not black. If I look at it with the naked eye, it's a metallic. It's like a gunmetal. My, my, my phone makes it look black. This little shield here is a separate piece, and it's, there's a peg just sticking out of the arm. It would have been better if it was the other way around, I think. But anyways, uh, even details on the back of the shield here. It's painted brown and yellow. I believe these round things are little missiles that shoot out of the shield, and fandom tells me there's some mines or something space mines inside of this shield as well i haven't seen the episode where these two robots fight i haven't been able to find a free version of the first uh gundam cartoon tv series so that's why i haven't I haven't bought it so i haven't watched the originals all right so i'm not going to try to twist that arm it just seems stuck but the the legs here minor grooves here in the bottom it's like a sky blue, and then a very light sky blue is the alternate blue. Some knee pads there, some vent in the chest. Uh, yeah, nice little effects there in the, the back. So, pretty well detailed. Maybe some, I don't know if those would be thrusters or what, but I just like it. It's a robotic looking knight. On this side here, this little uh, beam saber, this is a separate piece. And, uh,. Fandom also tells me this the fighting style of this robot is based on fencing, which makes sense. You know, it looks like an old medieval warrior. So being number 26 in the lineup, it has this old plastic base that's supposed to go around the feet, but the figure will stand perfectly fine without these bases. These bases, bases were just a waste of plastic, and they don't even tell you what figure they belong to, which is even worse. If you put them in a pile, you'll never figure, you'll take it hours to figure out what they belong to. All right, so that's cool. Alright, this next figure is probably one of the coolest figures in the whole Gundam universe, is the Unicorn uh, chassis RX-0. So Phantom's telling me it's around 20 meters and around 42 metric tons, but the story behind it is saying it's the first uh, full s cycle frame, meaning like this frame of a mobile suit will read the person's mind and react as if it was the same body as the pilot. Yeah, but unfortunately the thing was so fast, uh, it has to pump drugs into the pilots to keep them from dying. <laughs> it says here it can go up to 20, 20 G's, and so the thing actually pumps drugs into the person to reduce his blood flow or something like that. Okay, well anyways, this is actually the robot that got me even to know what Gundam was around maybe 20 years ago. Whenever the very first high grade model kit, no, the master grade model kit of this RXO came out my friend bought it and he was showing me building it and he was showing me that the body panels would actually expand and uh, it would literally grow in height and expose all these red panels when 
when it's in this destroy mode it's called and uh sorry i didn't mention it this is number 163 in the lineup of uh, gundam confer just from series number pound zero eight and the red means it's in destroy mode meaning it's like a super boost mode but it, that boost mode doesn't last too long again being used it's uh, got some staining i can see some brown staining on the bicep and it came with this bazooka but it doesn't seem to want to fit the back you will notice that i pulled this peg stand off so the more modern releases these pound wave series they have these instead of those clear bases which are kind of silly all right well let's take a look at this guy here so it's just a flat white it looks like the main body it's not glossy at all nor was the other one um it seems like the majority of these uh, converge figures are flat finishes, which I actually like. I don't want them to look glossy. I mean, they're war vehicles, right? So they should look dirty, if, if anything. Uh, the red painting is okay in many spots. A little bit lacking in other spots, it seems. But, uh, so far, so good. It's just like there's not enough red, like, up in there. It seems dull. There's not enough red. You know, you can see a little white peeking through. But, imagining the poor soul that had to paint this. I don't know if these are painted by hand. I kind of think that they might be because I don't know how you'd get paint inside of a crevice like this. This is actually recessed from the white, this red line. So, but I don't know. I don't, I don't go to the Bandai factory. All right, well, let's see here. This head is just moving. It's on a peg and there's some gunmetal paint on that peg there. I like this, got these little red dots here. I forget what those, I don't know what those are. I remember building them on the model kit though, the high grade model kit I built. This shield is a separate piece, you know, typical stuff, some details on the back. Uh, it's interesting, see, they'll even get, they got the red even on these more or less visible surfaces here. I wonder if this was two pieces before and they glued it together. I think there might be a gap there, so that's probably how they did it. Anyways, so the arm, yeah, whatever. Okay, I'll put this shield. Well, you want to leave it off. So the arms are on the pegs as well. So the eyes on this one, I think, yeah, they're clear green. So they're much better than the last one, which is painted pink. So that's nice. You got the depth of the light bouncing around inside the optics of this thing. And then this though is just painted green, but it's a metallic green. And obviously that's yellow. All right, and it does say the chassis coat on it. RX-0, so that's cool. Could probably use a little extra paint maybe up in here or something. All right, this backpack, yeah, I don't know if that comes off. It definitely has to be a separate piece, but it might be glued in place. And these are like handles for the beam sabers, I think. And it's got pretty crude looking thrusters, it seems, right there, unfortunately. Same with there. And then, uh, yeah, pretty plain. Bottom of the feet, some details there, the peg hole there. You can see the side of the leg here. Nice little metallic gray here and that red coming in, but again, maybe not as much as it should be. Like right there, I feel it should be red. Uh, this blue is a darker blue. Maybe a hint of purple is in it as well. All right, but this red does go to the back side here, so that's nice. But I have a suspicion this should be red down here in the legs and they skipped it. So this side also on this arm has a peg hole, so I guess you could switch the shield. All right. And then we'll take a look here. The hand and the gun are separate, so that's nice. I believe these are stacked magazines, so it's like one, two, three magazines. I'm not sure what that is though. On this little uh, machine gun or pulse rifle, I'm not sure what it is again. All right, so yeah, unfortunately there's some staining there. Maybe I'll take a Q-tip to it later and hopefully that'll come off. Now this bazooka thing, I noticed on the back here, there is a recess and on the packaging, it shows this thing kind of like in this position, I think. Wait, oh, I think it's supposed to be this. At first I thought it was this, but that's for the hand. But there's a peg here on this side. So yeah. Yeah, it acts like a, like a kickstand, actually. 
But these guys always seem to stand, even without uh, these bases. So they're 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 designed with big enough feet that they generally stand. I don't think I've had one yet that falls over. Okay, so I wonder if this can go this way. All right, you can go. Yeah, look, it'll even stand with all that weight on the back. So pretty well designed. This bazooka, though, I wish it kind of had a deeper recess there. It's nice that it's there. It could add some paint there or a black sharpie pretty easily. Yeah. And then you got some bent details and bolt details and stuff like that. Yeah, so, no. I thought for a second the sides are... Yeah, it is asymmetric. On this side you have probably like a fold-out handle or something. But this side is just smooth. All right. Just fiddling around with this while I was putting it on the display stand here, but I was trying to see if you could fit maybe this bazooka on the side in that hole, but now it's, it's I guess you could maybe force this one in. But also, this little rifle, there's no peg for that rifle to fit on the backpack. So like if you, unfortunately, well I guess you can. You can store the rifle kind of like that. And then actually the, the bazooka will slide into this guy's hand. And the bazooka rests pretty well on the shoulder. So that's that's a good reach. Probably designed, I think. But it, it blocks so much of the side of the thing that, you know, I won't display it like that. I'll display it like this, I think. Alright. But decent options, I guess, you can fiddle around with. Let's try it with this up. So let's compare it to a few other Gundams now. In the converge line, that is. So, here's the RX-78-2 that this Guyan was supposed to be fighting, although this one has 7-Eleven store colors on it. I think it looks cool. And then here's a the unicorn I reviewed earlier. This is just in the regular mode, it's not in the destroy mode, so all the panels are shut tight and none of the red is st shining through yet. And like the, the horn is folded up. I'm going to throw out some weird ones here because this is such a weird design that it looks very unlike any other Gundams. So this is another one that looks unlike anything else. It's called a Cubely. And then this one is designed by Sid Mead, the futurist, and it's called the Turn A. So very cool. Alright, so today we got an old school Guyan and then a, a new school unicorn. I think this unicorn might be the most popular Gundam. Uh, in Japan they supposedly have a full size RX-78, but I think since then they may have been replaced by a full size unicorn, because that is, I guess, the latest and greatest Gundam robot from the Bandai universe that they created there. Alright, well, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something. I know I did. I'm always learning about all these different robots and I wish I only had time to actually watch more of the cartoons. So if anyone knows where I can watch the very original cartoon TV show with English subtitles, is there a website? I'd, I'd be grateful because I'd like to watch at least the very first cartoon series. Okay, well thank you for watching this, and uh, I'll see you in the next Converge video.